Hey everyone, welcome back. And in this video, let's just go ahead and explore the state of JavaScript front-end frameworks 2021 survey. This survey includes a lot of interesting data around different frameworks used for front-end web development. And I'm gonna make sense of some of this data today with you. Let's analyze some of these things and see what valuable information can come out of that. If you're new here, make sure you leave a like, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon. This is free of cost and helps the channel grow. So if you see the very first thing over here, you're going to see the rankings column, the rankings table, which includes a bunch of metrics against all of these frameworks, which are, you know, they're rank against. So starting from satisfaction, you can see React, Vue, Angular, Ember come from very far away, right? And you can see that there's a sudden steep drop in Ember.js, which is expected because I also don't see a lot of people recommending and using Ember anytime soon. And the satisfaction formula over here, you can see that it says would use again by total number of people who attempted. For React, you can see it's, it's pretty much a little bit stable on the site. So it's jumping between 80 to 90% every single year. Now the survey actually is fine for satisfaction. I mean, it gives a clear picture, but I'm not really convinced about the survey is the interest part because interest over here the formula which they use it says that you want to learn something divided by the total number of people so i'm assuming that if let's say if i'm giving the survey i would definitely mark it as satisfaction but i would not mark that i want to learn react so maybe i'll mark not interested because i already know react so i'm not sure how the survey was organized or how the questionnaire was but if this was the metric where you had to either mark want to learn or mark not interested i do believe this is this is like kind of putting the question in a wrong way because older technologies would obviously get a lot more into the not interested part because those developers are already experienced with the tech so i'm not sure how well this data is but anyway, let's see. Uh, React, obviously, like I expect, that'll, you know, one of the oldest frameworks out there started in 2013. Framework library, just excuse me for this video for one time because there's a mix of a lot of stuff going on over here. So React is going a little weaker on the interest side because this would be increasing a lot. Like I said, you know, people, keep on learning and learning and those people when they give survey they are not interested in learning react similarly you can see the newer frameworks like swelt for example is picking up because this is like less discovered frameworks and a lot of more people want to learn it a lot of more people are interested in this so the percentages are going up for usage again i mean these graphs interleave a lot i mean satisfaction and interest but usage gets the bar straight right react has been the king of usage since a very long time angular comes right below that then there's Vue.js since a very long time again. Then we have a couple of new players in the town. React, which kind of is React itself, but a, a little minified version of it, used to be at number four by 2019, but Swelt overtook it. And Swelt is growing. And with the fact that the founder and the creator of Swelt now actually works in Vercel, I do believe like Vercel would put a little bit of effort, at least if not a lot of effort, to actually push Swelt above as well. Because Vercel at the end of the day is creating their own infrastructure and their own cloud in a way so they want to support as many frameworks as they can they live and breathe next.js and react but i do believe they will work equally hard on swelled as well and finally the fourth tab you see here which is awareness which is pretty much just like you know at least for the usage part it, it seems like there's not a lot of differences just a couple of differences awareness is 100 percent you know people know react people know view angular there's there's not a lot of people who don't know about these top three i mean like the service says, 100% people know about that. That means every single person who answered the survey knows about React, Vue, and Angular. But there are a few things, and especially the ones you can see which are upcoming. SolidJS is something which I've also heard. I've also started hearing just a little bit now. Swelt is obviously popular now, but you see that the new players are coming up in this. Mm -hmm. All right, the second area of comparison is this experience over time graphs, which is also very helpful. And if I open React, for example, you can see that... Uh, React has been something which is obviously has been growing a lot in terms of would use again. But as time passes by, you see a lot of churn of developers on React as well. But the important thing, I believe, is to understand that the whole pie is also growing. So it might seem like, you know, this is going the other way. But these are percentages of absolute values, right? And those absolute values always increases. So 66.9% of whatever 
sample space or whatever total space we have is much more now than 70.1% of last year, for example. So the trend is definitely receding in terms of wood use again. But like I said, it still means that it's increasing. It does not mean it's the downfall or anything like that. And it will be definitely more and better for newer frameworks compared to older ones, because like I said, there is absolutely a churn in people who are using a certain technology. Similarly, the number of people who have heard of it and don't know what it is, is also decreasing. That is you know that they, they don't have learned react yet that's that's what i mean to say that is percentage is also decreasing that means we are taking people from this sample and putting them either in the positive or in the negative space so react is an example of a healthy graph over here what is not an example of a healthy graph is ember for example you can see a lot more people are starting to now not use it and not are not even interested which is like a huge huge red flag so if you're learning ember for example in 2022 it might not be the best idea. Similarly, the only thing worse than not interested is never even heard of. So that's also bad for a framework like Stimulus. Alpine is also in a bad situation. And Angular got a sudden hit from, you know, I believe this was the point where they released. No, I think this is Angular itself, not AngularJS or anything. But yeah, I mean, something happened in 2018 and the people discovered like maybe it was over-engineered. Maybe there's a lot more boilerplate and a lot more things to do in Angular. And it got a huge hit where it converted a lot more people who were not even interested or maybe they were interested in two people who will not use it again and swelt again is a rising kid in the town so we gotta give it a few more years to actually make sense of the data what i have seen so far as well as the data suggests the growth for swelt looks healthy at the moment so there's another section called other tools which i believe is is something which not a lot of people have attempted because we have less number of accounts but you can see a couple of interesting things happening over here the first one obviously is that remix is right below next.js and remix is a framework which is extremely new it has just been around it has been work in progress for a while and it comes from creators of the act router but you can see that remix has is just below next.js and if you are on twitter if you have been following you know this tech space of remix next.js you know that there is a lot of support for remix as well and not so much anything against remix or you know if you compare next.js and remix together it almost seems like that remix has a lot more benefits to it whether that's in terms of non-window lock-in whether that's in terms of you know the effort and the things they have put for the web standards the web fronts so yeah i mean this is something i'm trying to keep my eye on definitely for the coming months and even years the the strong reason why Next.js is winning and will probably continue to win is because Next.js is backed by a company like Warsaw, which provides beautiful first class support for developers and for Next.js for having the best experience possible when you're developing with Next.js. Remix in that regards might suffer a little bit because it is also developing its tooling around Cloudflare workers and everything, but it still does not have its own SaaS platform, for example, for hosting everything. So that's hopefully work in progress, I believe. But yeah, I mean, it's, it's very interesting to see that Remix is also somewhere in this survey even though it was just released a few months back and finally a lot more people are actually happy with the state of the front-end frameworks right now and some people are actually very happy and a few very few people are very unhappy i mean it's it's not um i think these people are actually not aware about the amount of work and progress that has been happening in the front-end world and i agree like there's a lot more that we could fix as developers a lot more we should educate people about what is you know these uh, web standards and performance and how to use how to measure first fcp and you know cls stuff like these which improves the user experience there's a long way to go but i still feel like next.js and remix and these newer frameworks are pushing it a lot i mean they are pushing the CDN technologies and they're pushing rendering on the edge and delivering fast files without JavaScript, without additional bloatware, a lot more. So it's time, now it's time that we are taking back the computation from clients back to server, right? 2010 to 2020, I feel like was the time where we sent a lot more code on the clients clients were handling the stuff but it's, it's now again time to actually make performant web performant pages better performance and use javascript as a as a thing which is you know adding taste to the website not as something which boots your application itself so yep that's pretty much it for this video in the next one probably we'll discuss the back-end frameworks for the state of javascript that is all for this one 
if you like this make sure you leave a like and let me know in the comments below which javascript framework is your best framework and why that's all for this video i'm gonna see you in the next one really soon if you're still watching this video make sure you comment down in the comment section i watched this video till the end also if you're not part of code Dump's discord community you're missing out a lot on events which we organize on a weekly basis to code you already know the drill make sure you like the video subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and thank you so much for watching